There is an ancient Cornish legend that says that Jesus Christ visited Cornwall. And not just once, he was alleged to be a regular visitor to the south of Britain. And during his life, he's believed to have travelled widely. In this video, I'll offer some information regarding this intriguing subject and put forward an explanation to what he might have been doing in Cornwall. Or as the Cornish might say, what's he doing all? Don't take it too seriously, as the references are few and far between. This is simply a collection, for the most part, of folklore and legend. The life of Jesus Christ was well documented, but the accounts of Jesus' young life, there's a gap of about 18 years in the story in the New Testament. Other than the statement that after he was 12 years old, Jesus advanced in wisdom and stature and in favour with God and men in the New Testament, there seems very few details of the 18-year gap. While Christian tradition suggests that Jesus simply lived in Galilee during the period of 18 years, modern scholarship holds that there's very little historical information to determine what happened during that time. So, what of the missing 18 years of Jesus? Some believe that from the age of 12 to the age of 29, he may have travelled extensively to Egypt, France, Britain, and possibly as far afield as India, where he may have studied Hinduism and the Eastern mystery traditions. What truth there is in these legends, I cannot say, as I wasn't there. Uh, I'm simply voicing folklore and legend. But I will say the stories, accurate or no, are very real. The ages of 12 and 29, the ages at either end of the lost years of Jesus Christ, have some importance in Judaism. The age of 13 is the age of Bar Mitzvah, the age of secular maturity, and the age of 30 is the age of readiness for the priesthood. But what business would Jesus have in the priesthood, you may ask, the humble son of a carpenter? Now I'm going to throw in an ounce of controversy now. I'm going to throw it in there because it came up in my research, uh, so please bear with me. At the time of Jesus, people who had a trade were known as craftsmen. The term carpenter may have been used on occasion, but it's a fact that people of all trades would have simply been known by the term craftsman. So whether you were a carpenter, artificer in metal, stonemason or priest, you in the common tongue would have been known as a craftsman. So Joseph, the carpenter, husband of Mary and Jesus' earthly father during his childhood, may have simply been known back in the day as a craftsman. Consider as a craftsman that his speciality was not with wood, but rather with religion. Consider for a moment that Joseph, the craftsman, was actually a priest. I know that's a stretch and Jesus could have travelled for 18 years without this being true, but I only ask you just to keep it on the back burner there for a moment while I tell you the rest of this story. Now, according to the legends, Jesus did indeed travel, but he did not travel alone. He travelled with a man referred to as his uncle, a chap called Joseph of Arimathea. There's a theory that Joseph of Arimathea may have become Jesus' guardian under Roman law. This would have come about if Mary uh, had become a widow. Now, there's no mention of her husband, also called Joseph, after Jesus was a boy, so he may well have died. Given the deeply spiritual nature of Jesus in his later life, it's likely that during his early years, he received from somewhere a deep, Gnostic, esoteric and spiritual awakening, so powerful that we still talk about it today. To gain such a deep level of enlightenment would require much learning, and what better way to learn a broad spectrum in those days than to travel? What would inspire the humble son of a carpenter to reach such a high level of spiritual enlightenment in his short life? Unless, of course, he was the son of a priest. Now, Joseph of Arimathea was the younger brother of the Virgin Mary's father, therefore he was Jesus' uncle, and he was a wealthy merchant. Now, his wealth was from dealing in minerals and metals. And there's a Latin version of the Bible where he's described as a decurio. This means that the Romans considered him to be a high official in charge of mines. Given his importance, Joseph of Arimathea had a large retinue and he travelled in a number of ships. The route they would have followed was the old Roman tin route to Marseille, where they would have leave the ships and then go overland to Brittany, and then on to Cornwall for tin and on to Somerset for lead. If the theory is correct, Jesus travelled with him. The idea of Jesus visiting England was partly popularised by the poet William Blake and his words for the hymn Jerusalem. 
And did those feet in ancient times walk upon England's mountains green? But did he visit Cornwall? It's quite plausible. Early Cornish tin miners were known to chant, Joseph was in the tin trade, as they worked. It is also mentioned in traditional tin miners' songs. The legend states that the first place they landed in Cornwall was St Moors, across the river from modern-day Falmouth. This is a safe anchorage where boats would have been quite safe from storms and winds. Once they were settled, they took small boats up the river now known as the Carrick Roads, where the ancient tin miners were working in areas such as Bizzo. From St Moors, they travelled west to Penwith, where they may have laid anchor in Mounts Bay, which is modern-day Penzance. A few miles north on the highest hill is a mine called Ding Dong. Now Joseph, the metal trader, would certainly have had an interest in this mine, being one of Cornwall's oldest tin mines. Penwith has always been a very productive tin source for miners. Ding Dong Mine is immediately adjacent to some of the most important ancient megalithic sites in Britain, which held great significance to the Druids. In this unspoiled area, such monuments as Chunkoit, Xenokoit and various important stone circles and standing stones still remain today. This is Xenokoit, an important dolmen or portal tomb, and in the background you can see the 19th century engine house on the site of the ancient Ding Dong Mine. West Cornwall, being the centre of Druid religion, would have been a very important stopping point for a young Jesus if he was on a pilgrimage of knowledge. It is said that while Joseph of Arimathea was sailing around the rest of Cornwall and southern Britain, trading with different areas, including Salisbury, an area known for its lead, that Jesus stayed and learnt from the Druids, the ways and the ancient beliefs. Eventually the time came for Jesus to return home, but he knew he'd found the place where he would live while preparing himself for his future life. When Jesus again returned in later years, the Druids respected Jesus as a teacher, and he travelled all over the southwest. Druids enjoyed the company of Jesus, but eventually the time came for him to return to Judea and his eventual fate and crucifixion. Now I'm not saying that Jesus did indeed travel to Cornwall. I honestly don't know, but it's certainly an interesting story. But whatever happened, Jesus, during his formative years, that's the age of 12 to 29, certainly obtained from somewhere great spiritual knowledge. Perhaps that was in part from the teachings of the Druids of Britain, it's likely, possibly, even conferred with the Egyptian priests during other travels. And it's even said that during the lost years, Jesus travelled much wider, even to the Far East, where he learnt from the Buddhists, which could have added to his already advanced level of enlightenment. Jesus eventually returned to his homeland at the age of 29. It must have been refreshing for people to see Jesus, such an enlightened person, practising compassion and tenderness in a place where stoning was commonplace in the street. He would have certainly stood out in the crowd, and <laughs> we know he certainly did. Jesus was likely crucified because he was a direct threat to the Roman establishment. A man of peace, preaching peace, with a great many followers. Personally, I've always compared the story to that of John Lennon. A man of peace, many followers, threat to the establishment. <laughs> but that's just my personal opinion. Jesus' death was not the end of this story, because Jesus was not the only threat to Roman authority. The Druids suffered a similar fate. Those learned men of science were almost completely eradicated in an act of genocide notable even for the Romans. And it's to the beauty of all Druids throughout all time that I dedicate this video. Well, I hope you enjoyed this short video. Please like and subscribe if you'd like to see more in the future. I'm Stevie W. This has been Bright Weird and thanks for watching.